Okay. So this one I'm going to, we're, we're doing this proof. We've got some given information. We're trying to prove that triangle QDA is congruent to triangle UAD. I'm going to highlight them in red and blue. QDA, this triangle, and UAD, that triangle. And now that we can see which triangles they are, I'm actually going to separate them out. I'm going to take them apart and redraw them um, separately so that we can analyze them a little bit better and we can refer back to the illustration to find out any information that we, we need to know that we don't have already. But we've got Q, B, A, and we've got, I'll do it in blue. UAD. Thanks for giving me a second to think. UAD. That's what we've got. And uh, let's put the marks to know what we've got. We've got that QD right here is congruent to UA given to us. We'll write that in a second. We know that angle QDA, this here, is congruent to angle UAD here. Okay. And I'm going to write that in for our proof just, uh, just to get started on it. Right, well, we know, we know that side QD is congruent to side UA. And I can list all of the given things in a single step because it's the same justification or reason. So I will say, basically, you can put a comma there to show that we're moving on to a second piece of information because, as you can see, what I'm about to write won't hold to one line. So the comma will help show that what we've already seen is one piece, and then what comes after it is just one other piece and not three pieces. Because I can't write this all in the space that I've got. Triangle Q D A is congruent to angle U A D. How do we know all the information that was all given to us? That is step one, what's given. Okay. What else do we know? Well, let's take a look. If we refer back to our original illustration, we will see that they're sharing side DA. That's this right here. That's that right there. Sharing that. So it's reflexively congruent to itself on the top. And if we drew it, drew it into the separated illustrations, we would then see that we've got side, angle, side, congruence. We have proven that, what we tried to prove, based on that. The first thing we need to do is we need to establish for number two that side DA is congruent to, and I'm going to reverse the order of the vertices because actually if we were to flip the second the triangle on the right onto the first one on the left we would see that the vertices switch so if we were writing these in a way that we lined up the vertices we would say side da is congruent to side ad how do we know by the reflexive property of congruence reflexive property of congruence. Okay. And then now we know the triangles are congruent to each other. So um, I don't know whether there's a value in leaving them separated like that. I'll leave them. I'll leave them here even though it kind of crowds my statement a little bit, um, which is just to then state that now we know triangle Q, D, A, is congruent to triangle UAD. And how do we know that? Well, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got a side, then an angle, then a side. Side, then an angle, and then a side. So what we've got 
is side angle side congruence and that is what we wanted to prove. So we can just put SAS. I'm going to write down at the bottom QED quad arrets demonstrandum. That which we tried to prove has been proved.